These are really conversations around and about one subject only, which is what in the world is going on? What is going on? I mean, what does it mean to be incarnate in a human body at the end of the 20th century in a squirrely culture like this, trying to make sense of your your heritage, your opportunities, the contents of the culture, the contents of your own mind, uh, is it possible to have an overarching viewpoint that is not somehow canned or cultish or self-limited in its uh, approach? In other words, is it possible to cultivate an open mind and sanity in the kind of society and psychological environment uh, that we all share. And it grows daily and weekly, as you know, harder to do this, weirder to integrate, more on your plate to assimilate. And I certainly don't have final or even nearly final answers. I think it all lies in posing the questions in a certain way, in feeling the data in a certain way. And one of the things I try to convince people is it's not necessary to achieve closure with this stuff. And in fact, any ideological or belief system that offers closure, meaning final answers, is sure to be wrong, sure to be self-limiting, sure to be inadequate to the fact. So one of the ideas I'd like to put out is that, uh, and it may seem strange in this menu, but perhaps not, uh, the idea that ideology is not our friend. It is not a matter of choosing from a smorgasbord of ideologies and rejecting the flawed, the self-contradictory, and the oversimple in favor of the unflawed, the complex enough. Uh, where is it writ in adamantine that semi-carnivorous monkeys can or should be capable of understanding reality? That seems to me one of the first illusions of, and, and one of the more prideful illusions of human culture, that a final understanding is possible in the first place better, I think, to try and frame uh, questions which can endure, questions which can endure, and leave off searching for answers, because answers are like operating systems. They're being upgraded faster than you can keep up with it. I want to mention just a couple of things that are happening to sort of set the context. I mean, this is the stuff I worry about or think about. Uh, in the last 10 days, if you have not been paying attention, because the news has certainly been offering many different matters to claim your attention, but in the last 10 days, uh, a new solar system, a new star system with three giant planets has been discovered. So this is a multiple planet solar system in Epsilon Andromeda, 44 light years away. What does that mean to us? Well, it means that solar systems like our own are probably as, uh, as common as popcorn on a theater floor. Uh, no reason to think not. In fact, right now, we know of 20 planets outside the solar system, twice as many as we know inside the solar system. So we're living in a different world than uh, everybody was living in, even just five years ago. Science is lifting veils and opening doorways on a universe so vast, so strange, so counterintuitive that it's literally all you can do to keep up. Uh, here's another factoid. There are now more square miles of territory in virtual reality than the entire surface of the earth. Virtual reality is now larger than this planet. Uh, I don't know if you spend much time in VR. I spend a little time there. I was at, looking at Alpha World before I left Hawaii. The opening screen is from 25,000 feet above Alpha World. 
the entire thing cannot fit on the screen. Denver would fit on the screen at an altitude of 25,000 feet. You could see the outlying suburbs. But Alpha World won't fit. That's how large a single world of virtual reality is. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, uh, being built, being expanded, being edited and changed as we speak. We're now just a hair's breadth away from there being six billion people on this planet. Uh, again, I checked on the internet before I left for something like a hundred million short. So by the time I get back to Hawaii in a month, we'll be over the six billion mark. Uh, then just to touch on a few things, uh, the strongest hallucinogen known to science is legal free and easily grown, totally unlimited uh, un, uh, in its distribution, its accessibility. I'm talking about alpha salvinorine now. Uh, quantum teleportation has been achieved and is moving out of the laboratory and probably in the next half dozen years will be the basis of an entirely new kind of computational machine with greater computing capacity than all the computers presently operating in North America. And had I had more time, I could just keep going with this laundry list of shockers. Uh, the human world is exploding at the seams. Human creativity and the implementation of human inventions and technologies is now at an accelerated fever pitch like nothing ever before seen in the history of the world. Well, where is it leading and how does one integrate this stuff into one's own life. What does it mean about the experience of being human? 